Okay. Oh, there's a helicopter. I'm gonna go this way, see what happens. Ah. I was talking to Dina the other day, and if you don't know who Dina is, I'm sure you will soon if you continue to watch my channel. She mentioned sweet potato gnocchi. She's like, what if you do sweet potato gnocchi? And I was like, what if I do sweet potato gnocchi? I've been craving shrimp scampi, so I thought, why not just do both? Can't be bad, right? All right, so here's the game plan. I'm gonna attempt, don't conform to the norm, sweet potato, gnocchi, shrimp, scampi. First thing I need to do is get out my sweet potato. Now to cook the sweet potato, I'm just gonna boil it in a pot of boiling water, and then after it's fully cooked, I'll need to take the skins off. Once I have the skins off, I'm gonna grate this potato. If I had a ricer, I would use that, but I don't have a ricer. You don't really wanna mash it because then it has a tendency to get gummy. And with gnocchi, you really want it to stay fluffy as much as possible. Grating it into a flat, thin layer on your cutting board will allow the moisture to escape so that it'll be less watery. And it'll also give you a nice flat surface to sprinkle the flour over the top of it. That way you won't get any clumps of flour and it'll be evenly distributed amongst the potato. Now, because I'm concerned that this is gonna fall apart once I start cooking it, I'm gonna add an egg. And I'm also gonna add some fresh grated Pecorino Romano cheese. I think between the cheese and the egg, It'll bind the potato enough together so that it won't fall apart. So I know what you're thinking. Audrey, why are you trying to reinvent the wheel here? Just go look up a recipe for sweet potato gnocchi. And to that I say, where's the fun in that? I very intentionally did not look up a recipe for sweet potato gnocchi. I think every once in a while, it's important to bring back the lost art of figuring things out on your own. Okay, now that I got that off my chest, back to the game plan. Once I have the flour all sprinkled over the top, I'm gonna knead this as little as possible. I just wanna fold it together very gently. Wait, before we go any further, we need to prep the shrimp. I'm not cool enough to have fresh shrimp, so I need to thaw my shrimp, which I'm gonna just do in a bowl of cold water. While the shrimp is thawing, then we have an opportunity to shape the gnocchi. So I'm gonna take my ball of gnocchi dough, roll it out into a thin snake-like shape, and then cut that snake shape into little chunks. And the correct tool for this is called a gnocchi board. At least that's what I call it. I'm sure it has an official Italian name, but I don't know what that is. You could also just use a fork or you could do none of those things and just leave them in the little pillowy chunks and not shape them at all. I made my own gnocchi board from a piece of scrap wood and some radio wire. And you'll see that later. Anyway, I'm gonna get a pot of boiling water going for the gnocchi. Add a bunch of salt to that because at this point there's no salt in the gnocchi. While the gnocchi's boiling, I will take a little bit of butter, melt it in a frying pan, mince up some garlic, drop the garlic into the butter and let it soften, get all those good garlic oils out and infused into the butter. And then parsley because it's pretty and because it's good for you. And then just a couple tablespoons of butter is probably not gonna be enough to coat the shrimp and the gnocchi. So I'm gonna add white wine just to give a little bit more volume to the sauce. Once that's good and saucy, add the shrimp. If you're using raw shrimp, then it'll only take a couple of minutes to cook. Then the gnocchi, hopefully by this point, hasn't fallen apart and is done. And you'll know it's done because it'll float up to the top. I'm gonna throw the gnocchi in, stir that all together. And then that should be it. I think all that's left to do is just serve it. Hope for the best. Oh wait, definitely wanna squeeze some lemon on top. So I'm gonna get a lemon wedge, squeeze that over the top of it, get some good, nice tangy, lemony flavors, extra parsley, of course, extra Pecorino Romano, because let's face it, everybody likes a ton of cheese on things. And then that's it. I have a good feeling about this. Oh, I need my mic. Okay, don't need this. Okay, so it's kind of important to start with cold water. You put your potato in the cold water. That way the temperature of the water and the potato come up together. And then you don't end up with a overcooked exterior of your potato with an undercooked interior of your potato. All right, I'm gonna take it off. Ready? Sweet potato. Water. 
Step one, complete. I'm gonna tell you about my homemade gnocchi board. The only goal here is to put some ridges on the outside of the gnocchi so that the sauce gets like all in the grooves and um, makes life better. I woke up one morning and thought to myself, I think I could make something that's like a gnocchi board from random stuff I have around the house. So I came up with this little contraption. It is a piece of scrap craft wood that I had lying around from a previous project. And, and this is radio wire. I took a flathead screwdriver and I took the flathead of the screwdriver and pressed little grooves in the corner. And then I wrapped the radio wire around it really tight and secured it in the back. So then you roll the gnocchi over the top of it and it puts little indentations in it. And it works great, I've used it before. I'm very proud of myself. I encourage everyone out there to be resourceful and figure out how to get things done, even if you don't have the right tool. We're also just gonna do it with a fork because everybody's got forks, hopefully. So while that's boiling, which it's definitely doing right now, I just every once in a while rotate it with my trusty chopstick. We'll know it's done when we stick a toothpick in it and it goes in nice and smoothly. So I'll test this in a little bit, but I don't want to poke too many holes in because we don't want the water to like seep in and make it super wet.
Well, I don't know if that looked like a disaster, but it certainly felt like one. I have sweet potato on my glasses. I don't know. It took way more flour than I expected. Now I'm officially stressed. Officially stressed out. I gotta go clean my glasses. All right, we're moving on. It's time to thaw some shrimp.
Okay, I prepped my ingredients because this process is gonna go pretty quickly and I don't wanna have to stop what I'm doing over here and chop parsley or garlic and then have my shrimp get overcooked or the gnocchi get like weird. So in addition to the parsley and the garlic and the lemon, I got out my butter and white wine. Our little, little gnocchi buddies. Shrimp is good to go. It's time. I'm not gonna lie, this looks freaking amazing. Anyway, we're ready to serve this. I'm gonna grate some cheese. Ooh, lemon. Now is the time for lemon. So we're gonna take this, squeeze some fresh lemon. This is gonna be so good. Rubber spatula so we get all the saucy goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Oh. I need a fork. 
Okay. Alright. It's the moment of truth. Here we go. Hmm. Oh man. Nerma, it's so good. You know it's good when you don't even want to talk about it. Mm. All right, so this definitely worked. I would like to give a big thank you to Dina for giving me this idea. If I could figure out a way to make these a little bit more fluffy, I think that'd be great. They're a little dense. There you go. It's a little bit dense on the interior. I mean, you saw what I did with that dough. That was kind of a train wreck. Remember when I said, like, knead the dough as little as possible? That is certainly not what happened. This is so delicious. Mmm. Mm-hmm.